What's up fellow gamers, this is video number two in the series detailing how to make your own HD packs for the Mason NES emulator. The topic is going to cover improving title screens by using condition functions. We're going to show you how to take a title screen that looks like this, and insert a title screen that looks like this. Or, consider a title screen that looks like this, getting transformed into a title screen that looks like this. Alright, so to get started, this video first assumes you've already completed the automated process to create an HD pack using Mason. If you haven't done that before, or you're not sure how, I'll have a link in the description below that should help. Once that's been created, you should have an HD pack folder here. And there should be a folder inside that that matches up with your ROM name. We're going to open that up so I can help you understand how the pack works. So once you're inside, you'll see a number of PNG files, and we're going to sort through those until we get to a highres.txt file, and this is the file that's the key that tells Mason where to look when it comes to image replacement. Alright, so there's a lot here, but let me try to help you make sense of what's going on. Basically this top line tells you what version of Mason was used to create the pack. This next line indicates what scale you're using, so a scale of 2 means that the resolution is double what an NES normally has. And this is the checksum of the ROM that you used. This next section here indicates all of the PNG files that were generated using the automated process. And once the format changes here, this really tells Mason where to go and where to look inside those files to match up graphics with, with what it's replacing. So whenever you're adding manual conditions, I like to add them here between here and here where the format changes. The reason I think that's a good spot is because you can view this top section as kind of like your table of contents, and down here are the actual instructions that are that's telling Mason to do something. Now the reason I think it's important to put it here is because if there ever is a you know two instruction sets that conflict with one another, the way the Mason logic works is that it reads from top down, so it's as soon as it finds a match, that's the match that it prioritizes. In other words, if you add a manual condition here that conflicts with something else further down, it'll prioritize with your custom condition. So that's the reason I like to put it here. Right, so I'm going to paste in something, and then I'm going to explain what it all means. So basically, anytime you have one of these hash signs, it tells Mason, don't actually use this for any instructions in the pack. The reason this is useful is it can, it can be used for notes to really help you keep organized. And so in this case, I'm telling Mason, don't read any of this. But since I can still read it, I know this is where I want to start my manual conditions, and this is where I want to end them. And I also have another title here after a hash that indicates, okay, this is what I'm going to use for my title screen. Right, so let's focus on these two lines here, because these are the two lines that don't have these hash marks. That means that Mason's actually paying attention to them. So this is the, the first line that pertains to the actual condition we're going to use. So what is a condition? Basically, it's an if-then statement. So we're telling Mason, okay, if X is true, then I want you to do something. And in this case, we're saying, okay, this is the condition I want. This is some unique identifier to indicate what that condition is. So it doesn't necessarily need to be this. You can call it test. But when you do that, you want to make sure that when you have your instruction that that's basically your then statement, you want that to match up with what you have typed here. So basically, if you're doing a condition, whatever pertains to that condition needs to match. So this test is going to match with what's in the brackets here. This next section here indicates the actual condition we're going to use. So basically we're going to tell Mason, I want you to look at a certain point on the screen to find something, and if that's true, I want you to do something. So we're using the tile at position. That's not the only type of condition you can use. There's memory check conditions, there's frame range conditions, but for the purposes of this, we're going to show you the tile at position. The next are the X and Y coordinates. So in this case, we're telling Mason to look at the coordinate x0 and y64 for a certain detail. So you might wonder how I came up with those x and y coordinates. And I can show you by bringing up Mason here. And if you start the game you want to work on and hit the, the escape button, that'll actually pause the game. That'll allow you to go to debug, CPU viewer, 
and that'll show what's actually happening in the background. So, when deciding to insert a title screen, the best thing you can do is look for something that's unique to the screen where you want to insert something. So in this is the case, this is the, the game I'm working on. It looks like there's a cloud here, which I'm going to guess doesn't actually appear anywhere else in the game. So if you look at the location on the very right hand side, it says 08. That's right in this area here. Again, I'm going to go over here, it says 08. The reason it's 064 in the highres.txt file is because it refers to pixels, and each square here, you see if I move a square, is 8 by 8 pixels. So whatever value you come up with here, you want to multiply by 8. So in this case, it's going to be 0 and 64. So if I right-click on it and say Copy Tile, HDPack Format, and move over to here, and then I, hi I highlight this and hit Paste, it'll actually paste the information of the tile I'm looking at. So just to recap everything that's in this line, basically I'm telling Mason here I want to use a condition. This is the name of that condition. I want it to look for a certain tile at a certain point on the screen. That point's located at 064. And this is the actual data that pertains to the tile I want it to look for. And I got that by right-clicking on the square and hitting Copy, HD Pack Format, and hitting Paste. All right, so for this next line, this next line pertains to what I actually want Mason to do if it finds this condition to be true. So again, this is the tag that indicates the unique identifier of the condition I want it to look for. This indicates that, Mason, I want you to place a background in on the screen. And if I, if I basically deleted all this information here, uh, what Mason would do is just always have the background on the screen all the time. So basically we want some type of unique identifier where it only does that in a certain circumstance. So that's why this beginning portion is, is important. Now this actually pertains to the name of the file I want to use for the background. You can call this whatever you'd like, but if you look through, I have some pre-prepared files and I called mine stitle1.png. The extensions aren't showing, but take my word for it, that's the file I, I want to use. And one detail I should mention about images you are using for background files, if I right click here and go to properties, you'll notice that the information says the image is 512 by 480. The reason for that is because I'm working on a scale of 2x. If you're working on a pack that's only 1x, you'll divide these numbers by 2. And if you're working on a pack that's 4x, you'd multiply the numbers by 2, and so on. You're going to want to create your title screen first in Photoshop or some other program of your choice in the dimensions that match these here and title it whatever you want. Just make sure that when you're referencing it in your pack, the file names match up. This next section here pertains to the brightness. I typically always have that as at 1 unless you want to do some fade effects. These next two sections pertain to horizontal and vertical scrolling. That is, that's if you're moving. Now, since we're using on a title screen, we're not actually moving, so we're gonna keep those as zero. And this last number references the layered backgrounds that I was talking about earlier. So basically, what this is useful for is if you wanna put multiple backgrounds over the top of each other. One area this was actually used was in Zelda Remastered with the top fog section. Now this is also helpful because we want to actually place our title screen above all of our previous graphics. In the prior revisions of Mason, what you had to do was actually record everything and then kind of blow out all of the graphics that you recorded, basically just deleting everything, making it transparent so you can see through the background. Now you don't need to do that anymore. You can basically just put a 39 here, which indicates the very top layer because it goes from zero till 39. And so your title screen and your, your background rather will show above all of the graphics that are you know, running in the background of the actual game. So what I'll do is I'll have all of this text in the description of the video, just so you can, uh, can kind of use it as a template and you can kind of mess around with things depending on what you want to use it for. Now that we have all this typed in, we're going to go to file and save and see what shows up. Now keep in mind it actually won't show up in the game until you restart Mason, so we're just going to go back, start Mason from the beginning, and open up your ROM, 
and there's our new title screen. Now, once that cloud actually goes away, this title screen will go away, and that, the reason for that is because we've only told Mason how to do that one aspect. In other words, we only told Mason to look at that one tile. So as a reminder, if we just go back into that PPU section, as soon as the cloud changes, this title screen should go away. So let me just unpause here and see what happens. We're going to unpause. All right. So it seemed to work. All right. So to fill out the entire title screen, you would repeat that process for every change in what, what's going on in the background on the game and you would do that so for instance you could use this black tree here and you could use that to put in a title screen and, and what you can also do that makes it a little easier is if you hit the minus button on your keyboard it slows down the emulation speed a little bit if i hit escape it'll go a little bit slow progressing forward if i hit plus it'll speed up just a little bit all right, so I'm going to hit pause. Now if I wanted to put a new title screen here, I would look for this detail. I would right click, copy to HTPack format like I did before, and keep repeating that process. So to save time, I've already done that, and I've actually got all the text here for all the different screens, and you can see how many there were. I'm just going to copy all of these, paste it in, and see how it looks. We're going to go in here, oops, didn't need to have that extra one, in here, go to file save, and again you're going to want to make sure that you restart everything, so to do that you can just go to open, and let me hit the plus button. Alright, so that's how you insert a title screen using a tile at function. You can also use the sprite at functions or you can use memory checks. And let me know if this video was helpful, if there's a good amount of demand for another video going over memory checks or frame range conditions, I can do those. And in case you're curious, frame ranges are what helped make the animated backgrounds in Metroid HD here possible. Also, memory checks are what helped make the shield artwork in Zelda Remastered here possible. A couple of last comments I should make about pack creation. If you've used a certain rev level of Mason to start a pack, make sure to keep using that rev level if editing it. The reason is because later revs can read all of the various pack formats, but you can sometimes run into issues when editing. So for example, Metroid HD was created with Mason Rev 9.6, now, other revs can read it, but if editing, the pack should really only be changed with Mason 9.6. Take my word on that. Also, if you're doing a combination of manual conditions, like what was done in this video, and automated pa pack generation like the previous video, make sure to cut out your manual conditions and make sure to put them in a safe place whenever resuming the automated portion. So for example, if I wanted to go back and start resume an automated portion of this, what I would do is I'd highlight all of this, I'd hit cut, and I'd make sure to put that somewhere safe, like in another Word document or another text file. I'd, I'd hit file, I'd save this, I'd do my automated portion, and then when it's done, I'd go back and then re-paste uh, the manual conditions here and then hit save it. So basically, whenever you're doing an automated portion, take out the manual stuff, do your automated portion, and then put it back. And the reason you want to do this is because when you're going to the automated method, Mason will look at this and it will actually jumble it all up, and you're just going to want to make sure that it's all safe uh, when you're doing that. So I'll make sure to have another link in the description below for the Star Tropics and Rogue Dawn packs shown in this video. Now, keep in mind, they only have title screens replaced and the rest of the game doesn't have replacement graphics. Now, even with that in mind, you may find them useful if you want to use them for learning purposes, or if you want to build your own packs based off of what has already been completed. A special shout out will also be in the description since I used some internet sources to help put those title screens together. Feel free to check out the original artwork that helped make those possible. And that's it for manual conditions. I hope you found that as a useful introduction to some of the features that can be used, especially for backgrounds. And I'll see you at the next video.
happy gaming.